Around Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex, you can find duffel bags that contain messages left behind by the employees of Fazbear Entertainment. Some of them contain hints to where you should go next, some give backstories on the animatronics, and a few of them tell stories of their own. Today we will be looking at a few of those stories. The first one being the Midnight Staff Meeting. So there are a few messages throughout Security Breach that raise some eyebrows. We know locals are disappearing, and missing children as well, but also employees. One of the messages, Job Security, mentions disappearing staff. The duffel bag is located in the Mazer Size control room, and its purpose is to tell you where to get the key to turn it on. But it does raise some questions. Where is everyone? Leo was the only one who had a copy of the maze control key, but I haven't seen him for months. Maybe that creepy bot knows where the key is. Leo was supposed to train it to work the maze. Instead, he tricked the bot into doing some busy work under the daycare theater. I'll check after the all-staff meeting tonight. All-staff meeting? That's peculiar. Though not the only peculiar thing. Ignoring the fact that he hasn't seen his co-worker in months, apparently he was tasked with teaching a creepy bot how to manage the maze room. It's likely he's referring to a staff bot, but the fact that he says creepy repeatedly makes me almost think of the daycare attendant. Likely he's not, but it's notable that it is a creepy bot who apparently works in both the daycare basement and the kitty maze. Though that could have been a staff bot as well, as there are some of those in the daycare theater, but none in the basement. In fact, the key is just found in the back corner. The writer of the message never got to it. We'll soon find out why. This is not the only message that mentions the all-staff meeting. The Balloon World maintenance log also mentions it. It reads, The Balloon Boy World game has been acting up. Customers have complained that it has started to glitch over time. I headed to the theater to fix it, and now it's gone. I never saw a move request, so it should still be there somewhere. I guess I'll check again after the company meeting. As you may know, the Balloon World arcade machine is hidden in the daycare attendant's room, and it's likely he's the one who put it there, as whoever did had the strength to haul it through the tiny tunnel leading into the room and then stood it upright. Why it was taken is unclear, perhaps because his face is on it. And once again, we hear of someone mentioning this staff meeting, another message that mentions it being question, which is found in the shower room. Are you going to the staff party? I don't want to stick around after my 14-hour shift, but I don't want to get laid off if I don't show up. This one refers to it as a party instead of a meeting, though the confusion likely comes from the all-staff meeting reminder. Reminder to all employees, the all-staff meeting is this Thursday night at 11.30 p.m. All service team attendance is mandatory. There will be cake! Now, this is when things get a little suspicious. This all-staff mandatory party is at 11.30 p.m. What a bizarre time to have a party, 30 minutes before the entire Pizzaplex closes up. Though it is possible that this was just a ruse to get them in and out as fast as possible, but there seems to be something more sinister going on. And there is, but not in the way you might be thinking. Pink Slip. Attention employees! Good news! Due to the success of the staff project, we will no longer need nighttime employee coverage. We will be reducing nighttime hours effective immediately. Enjoy the additional time with your families. So, all good, right? Just another skeevy move by Frasbear Entertainment to lay off large swaths of employees. There's just one thing. So, if you go to the basement, there's actually a sizable dining room downstairs, either a private dining room or a staff room. The place is utterly ransacked, broken and disheveled, like something ran straight through there and destroyed the place. The only one we know who might have done this is Monty, but that doesn't seem to be the case. At least, it would be weird of him to run down here and trash the place. By all means, this room is where they must have had the staff party, if not made obvious by the fact that the pink slip duffel bag is found in this room, and the all-staff meeting duffel bag is found right outside one of the doors. Who knows how long it's been since said party, but it's utterly decimated. Weird. Perhaps this is a sign something went wrong here, 
Perhaps there is a possibility that the staff rioted and vandalized the room themselves. There's also an Easter egg of a hidden Glamrock Endo wearing a party hat covered in cake. This could just be an unconnected random endoskeleton who came from a party, which Freddy's is known for. But the dining room is ransacked, and it is in the basement where the endoskeletons run around uncontrolled. Is it possible that the all-staff meeting suddenly took a devastating turn? I doubt Fazbear Entertainment themselves would murder a bunch of employees but it is possible that Vanny did so, and all those messages are covering her backside, or perhaps were not official messages, but provided by her. Because once Vanny gets rid of the entire night shift except for her, she's got free reign over the place, and Fazbear Entertainment will cover it up because she's got her claws in the bear. We know after Vanessa was hired, she managed to get the security team disbanded, as she's the only security guard now. So, her pulling this is very possible. But did this actually happen? We don't know, though something did happen in this room, and we probably won't ever find out what, unfortunately. Our next story is on the lighter side of the spectrum, and that's the Alfredo incident. Because it's just one message, instead of reading the message verbatim, I'm going to tell it like a story. The Alfredo Incident so the Pizzaplex cracks down ridiculously hard on its employees. They get on an employee named Jenkins for not replacing urinal cakes after a single use, which doesn't make any sense and would lead to a massive inflation of urinal cake purchases, and Elsa for showing up to work early. No doubt because Vanessa stamped her foot and stuck her lips out. But one employee was unfairly let go because of Lily H, an unknown person who has an unwieldy amount of power in the company. Assumed to be a fussy child or teen, her name is known by employees around the Pizzaplex. She demands Chicken Alfredo, which the employee says they don't have. Her father, whose name is unknown, throws a fit and summons the manager, Dennis. Dennis asks the employee why they didn't get her Chicken Alfredo, to which the employee says they don't have it, and then is promptly fired. Dennis then tries to get a staff bot to make it, but they don't know how because the Pizzaplex doesn't have it. Dennis is later fired by higher-ups. So this semi-useless story's punchline is that by the time Gregory enters the Pizzaplex and we're playing as him, Chicken Alfredo is on the menu. It stands out like a sore thumb, but apparently this unknown Lily H has such a draw with the company that Fazbear Entertainment rather bow to her whim and serve it than refuse and risk her spending $30 on something else. Which you know she would. I know her kind. The moral of the story is that not all of the Pizzaplex employees were unfairly fired. Rip Dennis. Okay, now back into the serious stories again. One that might apply to a more important character than Lily H or Cake Endo. One that involves the Princess Quest minigame. I call it... The Unhinged Savior. There are numerous messages that show the decline of an employee who discovered the Princess Quest arcade cabinets and became fixated on them. His, assuming it's a he, final fate is semi-known, but his identity is unclear, though there is a possibility that we might know who he is, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The Balloon Boy World, Chica's Feeding Frenzy, and A Arcade Machine logs all seem to be written by the same technician. They are all labeled in the same way, However, I don't think that the person who wrote the Balloon World message is the same one searching for the Princess Quest arcade machines. It is possible they are different technicians. Or that the technician didn't make it to the staff meeting like planned. The technician has a level head at this point, mentioning that the Balloon World cabinet is gone, confused to why the Feeding Frenzy game won't shut off, and to why the minigame game is in minigolf. Then we get to the Princess Quest 1 maintenance log. There's a Princess Quest 1 machine somewhere in the building. An actual stand-up arcade. I guess the devs pulled it from that old mobile game. Why port to arcade? A quick note here, but yes, in FNAF lore, the Princess Quest game was initially a mobile game, likely to go along with how the game was introduced and the mobile release of Help Wanted. Anyway, continuing to the next message, Princess Quest 2 maintenance log. Maintenance log. Princess Quest 2. Won't boot properly. No idea why. Shuts down when I try to play. Like it's personal. 
Doesn't matter anyway, I still haven't found Princess Quest 1. The next message is known as Out of Order. It is different than the previous messages, but the contents suggest it might be the same person. Inventory check. There is no record of a Princess Quest 3 arcade, yet there is a cabinet tucked away in Phaser Blast. Won't work though. Sometimes I hear it in attract mode, but I've never seen a single image displayed. Too creepy. Leave it where it is, at least until I play part 1 and 2. It's unclear which of these messages takes place when, but due to the lineup we can assume that the Princess Quest 2 takes place before Out of Order. A quick note on the Princess Quest minigame before we continue. So, in Security Breach, or at least in the Security Breach we got, you must complete the Princess Quest minigames to get the Save Vanny ending. The first Princess Quest is in the back of the Glamrock Beauty Salon. The second is down the long hall where you have the DJ Music Man chase. The third is in Vanny's room, only accessible after she shatters Freddy and chases you in the Vanny route at the end of the game. You have to play all of the games in order. Princess Quest 2 and 3 won't work unless 1 has been completed, and if you do not beat 1 and 2, you cannot trigger number 3 in Vanny's room in the ending. However, these next two messages raise some questions about this. Red Flag Maintenance Log I did it! I did what you wanted! I beat parts 1 and 2. Why won't you turn on? What else is there? Tell me! As we can see in this message, the technician is starting to become more fixated on these games, to the point where his behavior is marked as a red flag. This next message is the last message pertaining to the mystery. The Arcade Conspiracy. Exit Interview. They are working together. The Arcades, they are hiding something. The glitches. Glitch them all at the same time. Then the princess will recognize me. She's testing me. I am not worthy yet. The others are protecting it. Let me stay. I am so close. Just one more night. Please, I can save the princess. So, let's deconstruct this piece by piece. Firstly, the technician is now borderline hysterical, seemingly aware to the fact that the arcade machines are haunted and wanting to appease the princess, the character of the Princess Quest game. Unfortunately, this caught the attention of Fazbear Entertainment. From the note, Exit Interview, we can apply that he was fired and thus was never able to discover the mystery of the Princess Quest machines, also likely not making it to this staff meeting. It should be noted that from the messages, we can tell that the technician didn't become entranced with the machines and paranoid about the conspiracy until after he played the games. He was in the general vicinity of all three machines and tried turning them on, but he still had a level and clear head. Then he found Princess Quest 1, played it and 2, and then has become convinced that the games are real and guiding him. I won't say he's being possessed, but one can assume that the machines have, in fact, influenced him. They are the ones making him go mad. I think the whole glitch it all at the same time thing is perhaps a hint towards a mechanic that was cut from the final game. In the final game, you don't have to glitch the games. You can glitch Balloon World, but it doesn't do anything when you do. You just have to beat the Princess Quest games, as they are. However, in earlier FNAF games and minigames, ones that were heavy in lore implications, you often had to glitch the games or find a secret route to get the true meaning out of them. FNAF 3 and FNAF World involved glitching minigames to get the true endings. Sister Location had a minigame that you had to complete to get all three stars. Pizzeria Simulator had mini games that you either had to play numerous times, or in the case of Midnight Motorist, find a hidden route to get the secret cutscene. In almost all of these cases, there were extra steps to see what the mini games were hiding, and it was not as simple as completing them. Like I said, Security Breach has an example of this in Balloon World. You can play the whole mini game straight, get a score, and be done with it but you have to glitch out the arcade machine to see the secret Eclipse Sun and to get the good night ending. I think initially there might have been a similar route in Princess Quest, where it wasn't as simple as beating the minigames but finding a secret or glitching it out to progress forward into the intended third act. However, considering the state the game was released in, this was likely trimmed down just to have the games be a basic playthrough experience with this message probably being the only example of the old route. But this is seemingly the end of the story of this unknown technician who lost his mind at Freddy's. It honestly is, but who is he? 
Well, we don't know. In fact, there is absolutely no way of knowing who he is. But I think maybe it's possible that it's Lewis. So, who is Lewis? Lewis is a character first introduced in FNAF AR Special Delivery through emails between him and Ness, Vanessa. Many of the emails being scrapped, but quite a few still making it into the game. Lewis is Ness's overseer in the IT department, along with being her admirer. He frequently writes her messages of concern over her red flags. In fact, it is through his messages that we know that Ness bought the torture devices to break her fingers and toes with, and sent flowers to herself with a threatening message on them, flowers for your grave. As you might expect, these are threats that Glitchtrap is puppeteering Ness to perform, along with making her look up how long a human can survive being cut apart, to which Ness writes, help. To all of this, Lewis is concerned, but easily forgiving and makes excuses for Ness, which is because he's a very nice guy. Here are some lines to show how nice he is. Hey Ness, I wanted to know if you're doing okay. I appreciate your taking my advice about the red flag search terms. If I thought I'd have to file an incident report on you, I think I'd just have to quit instead. Hey Ness, it was really great talking to you today. I think that might have been the first time we've actually had an in-person conversation. It's weird, I feel like I know you so well, but I guess you don't know much about me. We're just going to fix that. It's like there's two sides of you, and I get that. I feel like that too. There's the bright, happy side of you that orders cupcake cookbooks and rainbow hair extensions and that glittery pink journal with all the pictures of puppies, and that's great. What Vanessa is he talking about? But then there's the side of you that ordered chocolates and flowers for yourself and pretended they were from your boyfriend, Brad. I'm not judging you for being lonely. I definitely understand where you're coming from there. But Ness, I also saw what you had written on that card. Flowers for your grave? Why would you have an imaginary boyfriend who's threatening to kill you? You know that's not healthy, right? I've been through some tough times of my own, and what got me through was letting people in, not shutting them out. I'm here for you, Ness. I really am. All you have to do is ask. If you have any questions about the policy, let me know. We could even get coffee or something and go over all the words to avoid. Anyway, my offer still stands if you want to go over the company policy. I'm free any day after work. We could grab dinner or coffee if you want. Everything's the same with me, but I guess you know that. You see me every day at work. Maybe one day we can get that coffee. Anyway, it was nice having some in-person time. Maybe we can do it again soon. I still owe you that coffee I keep saying we should get. You know what? I realized I'm always asking if you're okay, as if I'm some kind of perfect guy who's always okay and has everything figured out. So I just wanted to say it's fine if you're not okay. I'm not always okay either. I mean, things are good. I've got a good job, right? People think it's awesome that I work for Fazbear Entertainment. They think I play games all day. Does that happen to you too? I think they get confused because I do computer stuff, but I don't work on the actual games. So whenever people hear I do computer stuff and I work for Fazbear, they assume I work on games, then they're disappointed, and I'm disappointed for disappointing them. It's kind of a bummer. I like my job okay, though. It's where I met you, after all. I guess I just thought I'd know what I was doing with my life by now. I thought if I studied hard and I got a good job, everything else would fall into place. Turns out all I learned by studying hard to get a good job was how to study and work. All that time I thought other people were wasting, dating and hanging out, doing nothing. They were learning how to date and hang out. I never really got the hang of that stuff. That's why I'm spending Saturday night writing to a beautiful girl who never writes me back. I wish you would write back, or talk to me at work, like the other day. I felt like you really got me that day. I know I don't totally get you, Ness, but I want to, if you would just let me. For God's sakes, Lewis, maybe she doesn't want to have coffee with you. Maybe she doesn't like coffee. Maybe she'll take a shot at the coffee just so she can spit it back in your face. But yeah, Lewis doesn't seem like a bad guy, but you can see where his head is in the whole situation. Lewis is mentioned in Vanessa's therapy tapes, but weirdly enough, he seems to have been retconned into a different position in the marketing team. I suppose having him as her overseer didn't seem like a good idea anymore, or maybe he shifted positions trying to follow her when she transferred into security. Vanessa herself doesn't seem interested in Lewis. Sometimes I talk with Lewis. He's in the marketing department. 
he's nice, I guess. Now, it is possible that Lewis is truly just a non-character, but it's also possible that Lewis had a larger role that was cut. You know, in the earliest drafts of Security Breach's story, Vanessa was not the security guard. There was actually an old security guard who Gregory teamed up with instead of Freddy. That's not to say this technician is Lewis or that these messages mattered beyond setting up Ness's possession. However, it does mean that there were some changes. Lewis's job was one of them. Though admittedly, there's no evidence that Lewis is this technician. It's not like the technician looks too deep trying to investigate what happened to Ness. It's just a coincidence. Heck, the final message is, for some reason, in the daycare attendant's room. All we need is confirmation that Sun does maintenance in his spare time, and bingo, we've got another suspect. But that's the end of the story for now. The long and short of it is that one day, a technician got a little too close to the arcade machines, and they sucked him in too deep. But that's where we're going to call it for today. I know these stories are a little open for interpretation, but I hope you got something from them. Thank you for watching.